Hey there everybody welcome again and this is part 12 of this tutorial series and in today's tutorial we're going to make a leatherboard system such that you can host your high scores and stuff and update it as time goes on. So first off I want to show you the changes I've made. I made a leatherboard button as you can see here and a HTTP request node as a child of it and I connected the signals to the button script. When you press the button there is a URL that is going to be equal to autoload the high score API. So the high score API is basically a link and this link is gotten from zandiapi.xyz. Zandi API is basically a platform that allows you to host files for free. But so quickly I'm just going to sign up and log into my account here. And once that's done you should see everything looking the way it is like this. So first off we're going to click on add file and in the spot for name we're going to just choose the name in my case it's going to be high scores and in the enter data space we're going to just put two square brackets which is just going to signify an array we're going to check json file and we're going to click submit when we do that we see that we have a new file highscores.json and if we open that we see an api link this is the link we saw in our autoload the high score api so we're just going to copy it and replace it there the other variables we have here is leatherboard and name and we're going to use those ones later on. The next thing is our panel which is going to be our high score panel basically. Just know that it's directly under the normal node in the menu scene. So this is basically where our high scores are going to be showing. And as you can see we have label a scroll container, vbox container, hbox container and two labels as children of it which are name and score. Then on the script for that, we have a function on HTTP request completed and that is going to be connected from our HTTP request node under the leatherboard. After that, we have a variable called data and it's going to just be the result of the API call. Also, don't forget that it was being called from the buttons immediately we press it. So the next thing is we make a scores variable and for each score in that data, we're going to append it to that scores variable. Basically, our data is meant to look like this with the name and the score. So if we want to assess the score, we're going to just do I dot score as shown here. Then we're going to sort the scores and invert it. Sorting the scores make it go in ascending order and inverting it makes it go in descending order basically. Then this three, uh, these two for loops and this if statement is just going to make sure that we arrange it accordingly. This is where we're using the autoload.leaderboard variable that we created and we're going to be appending ii. If you don't understand what this code does, just follow exactly what I'm doing because it might get really complicated if, if I want to explain it. Maybe you can stare at it for like 5 minutes or so then you are going to get a hang of it. Then after that, we're going to make a variable new and it's just going to be our a duplicate of our entity. I would have made this a new scene and just instanced it but I don't I want to take a different approach to this since I've not covered this in this tutorial before. So basically we duplicate the node and we're going to change the child node's text to the current name and also the score to the current score then show the node and add it as a child. That's basically everything. Then after we're done with all that, we're going to show the leatherboard. When we press close, um, the close button, we just basically hide it and that's all. So we're going to test this out real quick. But we're going to just copy some of our variables and just put it in there for testing sake. We're going to click submit to save it. And once that's saved, we open it again to view it. If we run the game now, you're going to see if we click leatherboard, it's going to take some time but it's going to load up the leatherboard here as shown in but the problem with that is we don't want to be manually putting in high scores we want it to be coming from the game directly so we're going to go first to the game scene or the game script and for now we're just going to get rid of that data submit it to save it and reopen it on the game script we have two new variables http get and http post which are just new http request nodes and first off, on the ready, we're going to add it as the child HTTP get and also call the HTTP get request on autoload the high score API. Then we're going to connect the request completed from the HTTP get to the request function, which is down here basically. Then after that, we, we add the HTTP post as a child again and connect its signal from, from request completed to the request function. Two other new variables we have is scores and kills. Scores is just basically an empty array and kills will be equal to zero. 
and kills is actually just being updated on the add point so there's no much things to do so on the request function after we load the data as shown so we do the same thing by appending all the scores to a variable which is named as score and we're going to sort it and invert it to make it the same the other and also these four loops and if statements um makes it arrange itself in a nice order so we're going to save that in auto load the letterboard know that this happens on the ready immediately it gets the request back so the next function is the check high score function and we're going to call this from the player anytime we want to go to the next level so we just say get parent to check high scores so that we can call the function from the game node after that we're going to check if the scores variable is empty or if the kills variable is greater than the last score that's like the least score that's what scores the back is doing it's basically doing calling the last element know that this is not the same from scores and the index of minus one because index of minus one is going to return an error but the back is just going to return null or the real value anyways the scores variable is usually empty just when we're in production or just merely we release the game because there are no high scores yet so the next thing is we're going to check if the scores variable is empty then we're going to re if it's not empty we're going to remove the last um score or the last elements or yes so the letterboard basically has um the names and the score so we're just going to remove the last person because he's the one that's um making our letterboard kind of populated so that's um, we're doing that so that we can maintain a stable amount of um high scores not like everybody is just training their scores there then we're going to make a pay variable called payload and it's just going to be a dictionary in the same pattern which has the name and in this case auto load the name and the score its skills and the name is basically davis there for now but you can put that as a line edit in your menu and just play around with it so that you can um, make things nice so the next thing is we're going to add our payload variable um in front of the letterboard but this is not really necessary you can just append it there it's basically the same thing but i don't know it's just different like this i guess then we have a variable called query and the query has the file name and the file data i want you to make sure you have this file name and file data because if you don't have it you're going to have run into some big problems so um the file name is going to be the name of your file in our case is high score and the file data is going to be that payload variable so if we can just dump the payload variable there so what we're going to do is we're going to use json.print so that we're going to convert it to a string so that it can be compatible to send then also we turn the whole json then we turn the whole query into a json into a string and we print query just for debugging purposes and we make a variable called headers and that's just going to be an array also make sure you get everything in this array um because i think you might run into some problems too so contents type um application slash json also make sure you get these cases too then the last thing is we're going to send the post request to the auto load the high score api then we are going to put in the headers at the next thing that's like custom headers and the next thing is going to be true not false then the next thing is http clients the method the underscore post and that's going to just basically tell it that this is a post method and at the end we just put the query in there so basically that's all and hopefully it will work out so right now i'm just going to reload the game right now kills is equal to zero so i'm going to get a gun and shoot many of these guys so now i'm done with that i have three kills if i go to the next thing you see that i printed our query nicely but we don't have a request result and that the reason for that is it's changing the scene before you can even complete the request so what we're going to do is we're going to yield for the request completed before we change the scene so we go back to the player and just before we trans um, transition we're just going to remove that code there and we are going to go to transition after we have sent the requests if the request is equal to no or if the person's mobile data or internet is not on it will basically just um skip that and do the transition i guess so that should be it i'm going to play the game again and shoot many of these guys anyways two is a nice score so if we're going to enter the next scene you're going to see that it prints out the, the query and also the response code so 200 means success and surprisingly we are good 
So we're going to go back to our Zandi API and check and, and just reload. And you're going to see that we have a new file data there, Davis dev with the score of two. So I think that's all for this tutorial. You can go to Zandi API or XYZ now and create a free account. And don't be scared of Zandi API stealing your data or anything. It's actually a website made by me. So um, I think <laughs> you may have a sense of security there. So yeah, I think that's all. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Smash subscribe and goodbye.